The New Estate Baptist Church Media presents The Living Word of God We believe the message you're about to listen to Will touch your spirit and soul Have a life-changing fellowship with the Lord Through the power of His Word May His glory shine through you forever For me, I want you to pray, Lord, today in this service. Burden shall be taken away from us. Every heaviness will disappear by the reason of encounter of this day. I want you to pray that life shall be transformed, that we will see Jesus and we're able to see the glory of the Lord. The Bible says, where there is the spirit of the Lord, there shall be liberty. Can you ask the Lord that in this service today, we will experience liberty of the Lord Almighty. There shall be liberty in the house. There shall be liberty in the house. Who is praying this morning? Who is making this declaration? There shall be liberty in this house today. Men we go receiving their possession and their inheritance. For as many that are yet to lay hold of their inheritance in Christ Jesus, they will take hold of their inheritance today. Daddy, we appreciate you because you are here for us already. We thank you because today we are going to enjoy your, your, your aroma and your glory. Thank you, blessed Savior. For we've prayed in Jesus' name. Our dear Lord, we want to worship you once again. Because of your wonderful works in our lives in the month of April. We thank you because by your mercy we are not consumed. Lord, we thank you as a nation, as a country. We know things are very hard, but because and but we know that your care and your love for us are so real. We are alive today by your power and by your grace alone. We come this morning with our heart full of appreciation and gratitude. Lord, may you please accept our heart of gratitude in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask today, is there anything that may want to hinder your movement in our midst today? By the reason of your blood, your death on the cross of Calvary, we ask, O oh Lord, show us mercy today and cleanse us of our iniquity in the name of Jesus. The Bible says where there is the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. In this service today, for as many that we appear before you today, we receive liberty for everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, when the time will come for us to appear and partake with you on the table, Lord, we ask today, yoke shall be broken. Burden shall be lifted. Life shall be transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our baptism now. Thank you. And turn to him 200. We'll be taking some medley series of hymns in 200 first then we'll now take the one you have in your bulletin our hymn for this year and we'll now take our hymn for 2016 hallelujah that is grace alone we are starting with 200 all hail the power of Jesus' name
story. I come along the hills of lying breeze and soldiers rise and press the ball to earth and night shall bear the glory sky against the falling bells below let all our strength be Lord that is a victory
please take your seat. Hallelujah. That gives us a taste of what's going to happen this evening when we come for our evening of worship. We encourage you to be here. Uh, it's going to be much more than what you have tasted this morning. And we trust God that the Lord himself will meet us at the point of our needs and that we will be refreshed and renewed when we do come together to just sing and worship God tonight. Amen. 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 All right, please, can we just greet the person by your left and right? Just tell them it's good sitting by you this morning. If there's anybody you have not told good morning and they are sitting next to you, can you tell them good morning? Somebody said good morning is a prayer. Good morning is not only a greeting, but it's also a prayer. It's like saying to the person, I wish you a good morning. I wish you a very good morning. Somebody say amen to that. The New Estate Baptist Church Media presents The Living Word of God. We believe the message you're about to listen to will touch your spirit and soul. Have a life-changing fellowship with the Lord. divine visitation in the name of Jesus. Thank you eternal Father for answering our prayer. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Open your Bible very quickly to the book of Judges. Judges, we are reading Judges chapter 1. The book of Judges chapter 1, we are taking verse Judges chapter 1, we're reading from verse 23 to 26. Judges chapter 1, verse 23 to 26. Chapter 1, 26. 23 to 26, Judges 23 to verse 26. Are we there? Please can we stand together as we read the word of God? Judges chapter 1 from verse 23 to 26. And the house of Joseph sent to, to spy Bethel. Now the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city. And they said unto him, Show us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city. And we will show thee mercy. And when he showed them the entrance into the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword. But they let go the man and all his family. And the man went into the land of the Hittites and built there a city and called the name of the, the, name of the city Luz, which is the name thereof until this day. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Today, I'd like us to look, at, to, to look at a subject that is very, very important to the heart of God and for our, for our interest. Amen. And the subject is man the entrances, man the entrances, or if you like, another version of it is shut the doors. Man the entrances, shut the doors. Man the entrances, shut the doors. If you look at the book of uh, Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 to 3, you will find out that 
the major task that God gave to Joshua after the death of Moses was to take Israel across the Jordan and get them into the promised land. Amen? While the land of Canaan, while the whole of the whole land of Canaan, as at that time, was fully occupied by other settlers who had taken possession of it, every part of it, and made it their own. When the Lord was telling uh, Joshua to take Israel across into the Jordan, I mean, into the Jordan and across into the land of promise, it is not as if the land was free. It was not as if the land was vacant. The land was fully occupied by people who had actually called the land their own because they had stayed there for a while. These were very strong nations, warriors in their own rights, who will certainly not easily give up the land for Israel to inherit. This is why repeatedly, if you read that scripture, you will find out that Joshua was told by the Lord that he will need to be strong and courageous. If you check that scripture, you see it repeatedly between, the, between chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 9. You will see this statement repeated. That Joshua, you have to be strong and courageous. Why will, he, why will God tell Joshua to have to be strong and courageous? Because the task was a daunting task. It was no child's play. The people that were there were well rooted. They had lived there for many years and have developed generations. They did not even know any other place to go. And so for you to wake up and come and ask them to quit, they would not just pack their things and go. All of you know very well, those of you who are landlords, who have homes or houses that you give out as, um, I mean, to tenants, you know that it is easy to bring a, a tenant in, but to ask a tenant to go is a big, big issue. Have you? To get a tenant out of the house, except if by themselves they say we want to pack. But if it is landlord that is giving them quick notice, ah, it's battle. They know that it's not your house. Yes, they know it's not your house. You can come and draw me to them. This is my house. I say, yes, I know. But you can't just throw me out like that. All right? So Israel knew, I mean, God knew that the people, of, the people that were occupying the land would not just accept, quit, and go. So he said to Joshua, to face this task, you have to be strong and courageous. He assured Joshua, however, that no one would be able to stand against him. An assignment, and he's saying to you, don't worry, I know they are strong, they are mighty men in valor, but I'm sure you know I'm stronger than everyone, I'm the strongest of all, and no one will be able to stand against you. That is to say, I'm going to give you a strength that not only matches their own, but surpasses their own so that you can overcome them. None of them will be able to stand against you. That was the promise of God to Joshua. And then secondly, he also said to him, I am going to be with you. The same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. That's the second assurance that God gave to Joshua. For him to brace up and be courageous and go into the task. And thirdly, God gave him the weapon of war, primary weapon of war. And that primary weapon of war is found in verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein night and day, and you will observe to keep it neither moving to the left nor to the right. If you do so and become obedient to it and commit yourself to it, you will make your way prosperous, including this way of taking the people across into the, into the land of promise and overcoming the enemies. You will make that way prosperous. And then he said you will have good success. Amen? So everything that Joshua was going to need for that assignment was given to him. Joshua divided the land immediately among 12 tribes. And you know very well from the history, he went across and he, over, he took the people of Israel across the Jordan and entered into the land. The Bible says he divided the land into 12, giving, giving, uh, into 11 pieces, actually, giving every tribe their own portion. But the Bible also tells us that Joshua died. Each time I read that, this particular portion, I just see that the work of God is a continuum. Nobody finishes it. Amen. Until the trumpet of Jesus Christ will sound. 
God has lined up his workers. And it is like a relay race. They carry the baton. And each person runs. When they finish their own portion, they hand over to another person. Moses ran to the point. Everybody, nobody will have thought that Moses would not take Israel into the land of promise. But he did it. And then Joshua came. Nobody will have thought that Joshua will end up that, that quickly, 110 years. But he got there. The Bible says, after he had divided the land to the people, Joshua died. As at the time that Joshua died, Israel had not taken full possession of the land yet. They were already there, but they have not yet dislodged the people, sent them out, and then settled down. Joshua died. No wonder. Scripture says, in the place where we read, if you, if you go back, go back, let's go back a little. Please take, take Judges 1 verse, from verse 1. Look at Judges 1 from verse 1. Then you'll see the continuation from Joshua. Judges chapter 1 from verse 1, it says, Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel did what? They asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites? First, to fight against them. Joshua was the person we all had our hope on. We trusted he was going to do the job and finish it. But now you have taken him. I'm very glad for Israel that they didn't go to anywhere else to seek help, but to go to the one who commissioned Joshua to do that job. They said, now that Joshua is dead, they ask of God and said, who will take us into the land? And who will give us this conquest that we're looking forward to? Israel needed a warrior who will lead them into the actual conquest of dislodging the inhabitants of the land in order to give them full possession of the land. And they inquired of the Lord for it and to find direction. And he gave them a word. And he said to them, take, ask Judah to take it up. Judah took up the assignment, but he also asked his brother Simeon, please come with me. When we have dealt with the people in my own portion, I'll join you to deal with the people in your own portion. It means to me that when God had divided the land among the Israelites, or I mean the Israelite families, each family had the responsibility of doing what? Of taking possession of their, their own portion by engaging whoever was there and giving the person a sack notice, knowing where God was behind them. Our subject today is in one of the tribes. One of the tribes was the, is, considered, uh, is called the tribe of Joseph. This tribe of Joseph, they headed to take Bethel. But people were already in Bethel. That's an allotment that fell to them. And so what did they do? They set up spies to go first and view the land and see what could be done. These spies were armed spies anyway. But what our interest today is that when the spies were approaching the land, certainly they must have been wondering how to enter into the land. Customarily, all the cities of the eastern uh, region have walls. They are not like Lagos, you can enter from anywhere. They had walls. I have tried in this service, to, to in, in, in this church, to describe the kind of walls that they had. Very thick walls that you just cannot easily penetrate. And those walls, therefore, kept every invader. The number one purpose of that wall was to ward off all incursion, all enemies that would want to enter into that land, unwanted visitors. So, the city was walled up. So, you can't access it just anyhow. But thank God, the city had entrances. At least there was an entrance. While they were, they were wondering where the entrance would be, they saw somebody come out of the entrance or come out from there, from the city. And they walked up to him quickly. Please, can you tell us where the entrance of the city is? And they gave him, they made a deal with him. If you show us the entrance to the city, we will be merciful to you and to your family. Is that a deal? They struck a deal. And the man agreed. 
they agreed to show them the entrance to the city, and he went on and showed them the entrance to the city. Where we read said, after they had, he, they, he had shown them the way into the city, they entered into the city, and what did they do? Open fire on the city. They entered into the city, they opened fire on the city, and slay the men and the women, and the, the, the men of that city with the edge of the sword. That is to say they killed the people. But the Bible says, according to their covenant, they decided to leave the man and his family in order that they may be true to their promise. Let me say here that it is that entrance, the showing of that entrance to these people by this man that got them into the city. Yeah, we are speaking from the advantage position of the fact that it is Israel that was fighting. But please, I'd like you to take on, understand that my, 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 my thrust in this message is that Israel was an enemy. Hello? Israel was what? Israel was an enemy as far as Bethel and our inhabitants were concerned. Israel was an enemy. So it means that that man, when he showed them the entrance to the city... He had actually exposed the entry points of the city to who? To an enemy. He had opened up the secret of the land to an enemy. And the enemy came to do what? He came to invade the land and killed everybody. Or killed the men in the city. All right? There are certain things I'd like us to learn quickly on this. And that is, first, your life, your family, your business, your home, your marriage is a city. Your life has an entry point. Your life has an entrance. Your family has an entrance. Your business, there is an entrance. I'm not talking about physical entrance. There is a spiritual entry point to your home, to your marriage, to your life, to your business, to your job, and to everything that concerns you. There is a point of entry. Secondly, what is that thing, what is that point of entry that gives access into your family, into your life? You need to identify what is that access point? What is that entrance? What is that entry point that gives access into your life, into your family? It's very, very key for you to understand this. Very, very important. Number three, what is the access point that the enemy will be looking for to penetrate and invade your life? What is the access point that the enemy, your enemy, like Israel, like like the enemy of Bethel, Israel, they couldn't enter the land, they couldn't kill the people, they couldn't devastate the land, or devastate the people, except that they got what? The entry point. When they, ent when they got to the entry point, only as they entered that they were able to do exploits and overcome the army of the land. So we are saying, what is that access point that the enemy will use in, when he's looking for a way to penetrate you? And invade your life. What is that access point that he will use to invade your marriage, invade your home, inv invade your, your, your business? You need to identify that. And when you have identified it, you need to do what? You need to man it. You need to do what? Man it. When we say manning something or, or, or an entrance, we are saying you must put security. You must put security. Another word for security is watchmen. You must put watchmen. You must devise a system whereby invaders cannot enter that entrance just anyhow. You must put a mechanism in place, put a system in place that will, work, that will keep your enemy far from the entry point or the access point into your life. So that like Israel put the people of Bethel to the sword that the, your own enemy will not enter into your life and put you to the sword or put your family to the sword or put your business to the sword or bring down your endeavors in life. You need to identify what is that access point. That is the, the critical matter and, and man it. 
Here, the entrance is the aspect of your life where you are weakest and most vulnerable. Did you hear me well? I'm giving you now the entry point. The entry point into your life is that point where you are weakest and most vulnerable. You know well that this wall, as it is built here, this access, this place, there are no blocks. There are no blocks here. So, as far as this building is concerned, this is a weakest point. Because there are no blocks. Even though we have put a glass here, you know it's not as strong as a block. If I use my leg now and just give this thing boza, the glass will shatter and I can pass through, right? Hello? But you know, if I'm going to use my hand, assuming that this, wall, this whole wall is made up of this quality, <laughs> I don't know the kind of boza I'm going to do that will get me through this wall. So, to that extent, this is a weak point. This gate here has become a point of vulnerability for this building. So, we are saying that your, uh, the access point into your life is that point of weakness, the point of your vulnerability, where it, you can easily be got. And then there's a penetration. When you identify that area of your weakness, please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, by this message, that you must man that area. You see, when you put soldiers here at this gate, though the wall stops here and there are no blocks, what is the replacement for the wall? It is the bullet, the gun. You say, if you like your life, come near here. Though there is no wall, but we have made up for the wall. By what? By the soldiers we have put here carrying AK-47. So, they have made up for the strength or for the weakness of the building in that area of vulnerability. Like the Israelite spies from Joseph were enemies who sought to penetrate Bethel and they had to go through the entrance. I want to say here, your life, your home, your business, your territory, in order to put you to the sword, the enemy will have to identify it. And I must announce to you, every day of your life, the enemy is making efforts, seeking that area of your vulnerability. He understands that every other area may have been fortified, but that your weak point is the access point. That weak point in the family is the access point. That weak point in your spiritual life is an access point. That weak point in your business is the access point, and you must take charge of it. I'd like us to look at scripture. Please, quickly. John chapter 10, verse number 10a. John 10, 10. The A part of John chapter 10, verse 10. Quickly, let's go. John chapter 10, the A part of verse 10. The thief cometh. Huh? But to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Is that exactly what, do you see something that Israel went to do in Bethel there. Israel entered into Bethel to do what? To destroy. In order to take over. That is an enemy. That's what the thief comes, so, comes to do. So you, everybody, please know there is someone who wants to enter into your life to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he will come in through your area of vulnerability. Look at first. Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Where are you? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be what? Please help me tell your neighbor, be vigilant. Help me tell your neighbor, be vigilant. That's exactly what I mean when I say you should man your entrance. We are saying what? Man your entrance, be vigilant because... You, if, you don't, if you don't get vigilant, if you are not sober, if you are not watchful, what will happen? He said, your adversary, the devil. What is another word for adversary? Everybody talk to me. The word for adversary is the enemy. Was Israel an enemy? Yes. As far as the life of Bethel was concerned, an enemy in the name of Joseph was coming to invade their land, to take it over. So they needed 
to know that there is an adversary. It is a recognition of the fact that there is an adversary that walls were built and gates were put and vigilante were put at the gate to stay there 24 hours so that the enemy will not be able to enter into the city because they were aware that once the enemy enters into the city, he will steal, he will kill, he will destroy. That's his mission. He says, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, doing, walketh about. I like the next word. What? Seeking. That word, seeking, tallies with what these spies were doing when they called the gentleman. What were they doing? They interrogated him, asking where the entrance is. That interrogation is what? It's an, ask, an act of seeking the entrance. Your adversary is walking about checking you all around when you are sleeping is not sleeping when you are having fun is not there he's not having fun when you are at party he's just checking out at every point when you are enjoying and jollificating he's checking busy checking seeking what seeking for whom he may devour he's looking for an opportunity other versions use use the word he is seeking an opportunity an opportunity is the same thing as entrance. Everybody look at Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Luke 22, 31. Luke 22, 31. Are you there? Are you at Luke 22, 31? Okay. Luke 22, 31. We read, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has what? Please use the word. The word is there. What is what? Desired. It's the same thing as the one we read previously that the devil did what? He's going about seeking, seeking, desiring. All of them are words for inquiry. Inquiring how to get into you. That Satan is inquiring. He desires to have you. That he may do what? Sift you. Sifting is another word for harm. To remove every good thing inside of your life and finish you. He cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's still the same thing as what? He wanted to sift you. Take life out of you. Take pleasure out of you. Take good, good, a good life from your family. He wants to take the essence of your business and make that business a non-entity, nothing else. He wants to make sure that marriage fails. It was must fail. Whatever has been sustaining that marriage for the past 25 years, I'm not going to rest until I see that marriage come down. No wonder in our time I still see marriages that have been 28 years and one day a man wakes up and said the wife is a witch or a woman wakes up and said her husband is a witch he wants to kill her. What could have gone wrong? They've lived together in, I mean, through thick and thin, through thick and thin. It's because the devil has been looking for an opportunity. He's been seeking. He's been desiring some way to do what? To penetrate trade that marriage and listen that you are 40 years in marriage does not make it too late for the devil to enter he's a very patient fighter he keeps on trying and keeps on trying and keeps on trying until he makes it he said he is he the devil has asked he's asking to be allowed to do what to enter in order to sift you I thank God for Jesus. He said, what? To sift you as wheat. I thank God for Jesus. He said, but don't, P Peter, don't worry. I have done what? I've prayed for you. Listen, I have prayed for you is equal to saying, I have manned your gates. I've manned the entrance. And as long as I've manned this entrance, the devil is a liar. He will not be able to penetrate your life He's not going to sift you because I have done what? I have mounted the gate. In fact, he had to come knocking, asking for permission. But I'm not going to grant it to the devil because you are mine. If the devil penetrates you, it's like I have penet he has penetrated me. So long as I'm here, sorry to the devil, I'm not going to allow him. I have manned your gates. Amen? I want you to know that the devil wants to come into your life and he will. You must mind your gates. He wants to come into that your home. You must mind your gates. I like to say here to all those who are married men and married women, please be careful with your family. 
Watch that family. Husband, please know that God gave you a responsibility beyond just... Hello. God gave you that woman, not just for... Yes, it's good. But hear me. He has made you the priest over that family. He has made, made you what? The warrior over that family. He said, whatever you bind here on earth, I've bound it in heaven. Whatever you lose here on earth, I lose it in heaven. If you leave the vulnerable area of your family, you as the husband man, and you are sleeping and snoring, the enemy will do what? He will enter. And very soon, you will see commotion. You will see confusion. Things that you never quarreled about, you will find out that they are causing quarrel. Tiny little things. You will even be ashamed to tell anybody what made you to quarrel. Because it's so insignificant. Hear me, the devil is not looking for big, big things. He's looking for what? An entrance. And the entrance is what? Very small. Oh, Kolobo Sata. God help you. God help me. God help all of us. I found out that the man who exposed, who showed the, 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 the people of Joseph the entrance was what? A fellow man from Bethel. And I have something to tell you. Let me tell you, don't be looking for someone who will expose the opening to your family from somewhere else. A member of your family could just make it known. It could be a husband, it could be a wife, it could be a son, it could be a daughter, it could be an uncle, it could be somebody living in your compound, in your family. I mean, you may bring a maid in your family. Please, every maid you bring, please be spiritually conscious and aware because once they have the key, they will open the key and let your enemy come in. Listen. That man was not patriotic. I won't call him a patriotic person. Why? He made known the entrance to his community. What did they do? Because they settled him. They did what? They settled him. There are people who are more concerned about themselves and they don't care about anybody else. The man settled himself and did not care whatever happened to his kinsmen in the entire city. So, everybody sitting under the sound of my voice, I'd like you to know that you must put your eye. Men and women, please put your eye on your children. Put your eye on your family. Put your eye on every movement. Don't take anything for granted. Don't take any movement for granted. Why? The enemy, your adversary, like a roaring lion, does what you have, you will seek for it. Did you hear me well? Whatever you already have, you don't seek for it. about your marriage. Please don't give him. Don't give him. Don't give him. Whatever the devil is going to offer, please don't take it. 
Because at the time you take it, you will compromise a greater value than what he's going to offer to you. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Amen. Amen. So, every one of us must be what? Must be vigilant. Please help me tell your neighbor, shine your eye. Oh, there is an anointing upon my head that is making me go mad. It's like I want to fight. The reason I feel the way I'm feeling is that many, many Christians are careless. Listen to me, a good thing, a good number of the predicaments that are befalling believers, I tell you, 75% is their fault. That's why scripture says what? To many of them, he said their, God, their belly has become their God for what they will eat and what they will drink, how they will live in, how much money they will have in their bank account. They are ready to go to any extent and be doing that. They collect and collect and collect. And as they are collecting, they are opening, they are pointing to the enemy. There is the entrance. He collects, I mean, he gives you the things of this world. But, he do, but in so doing, in your collecting, you do what? You open wide. The entrance to your life and to your situations. And hear me, he gives you on one hand, he will take with the other hand. Help me tell your neighbor, close the door. Amen. Amen. His first point of call, like the spies from Joseph, is to identify the way in your life or family. And that way, that entrance is the place that is not fortified, where you are weakest. Please check no, take note where you are weakest. That's the place where the devil wants. Paul calls this the sin that easily besets you. Oh my God. Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Put it up, please. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore sin we all also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin, which sin? Which sin now? That sin that easily besets you. That's your weak point. The place that when, they, when the devil passes through that angle, he's sure to get you. You said you know that that area is your weakness. Though in church, they don't know it. They see you doing supernatural. But they don't know that you know, you yourself, you know that that area is no good area. Because if they enter there, they will invade you. He said, well, the sin that easily besets you. That's what he, meant, he calls it. Romans 7, 22 to 24. Let's go. Romans 7, 22 to 24. Romans chapter 7, verse 22 to 24. Take me to Romans 7 now. 22 to 24. Are you there? For I delight in the law after the inward man. 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. What is that law? What is that law? It's a law of sin which, in, which is in my members. 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul, I mean, Paul identified there is a weakness. He is a strong Paul, oh, strong Paul. But hear him speaking like a frustrated Christian. He said, what? Well, there is a law that does not take permission from me to operate. That law just runs in my life. I find out that the things I hate to do, repeatedly, they are the things that I have a propensity to do. They are the things that I get attracted to. And I tried and tried and tried and tried. It's just a weakness in me. And he said, oh God, I'm what? I'm wretched. I'm helpless. God. Paul will identify a weakness. Brother, sitting here, I came to announce to you, you are not any better. Let him that is weak say, I am strong. Let him, he 
said what? We the, 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 the weak should say I'm strong. That means there is what? There is a weakness. Weakness is a reality. Weakness is a reality. Weakness is a reality. My weakness may not be your own. The place of my end or the, the place of my weakness may not be your own. The same way as the entrance to my house is not the same direction with the entrance to your house. But do they both have entrance? They both have entrance. So it is our responsibility to identify the place of weakness. Paul said, I have identified it. It is what? The things I hate to do are the things I find myself repeatedly doing. I hate it, but it is coming every day. Church, please identify. What is that thing that is a weakness in your life? That is coming repeatedly. You hate to do it, but you find yourself always falling into it. And many times, when you fall into it, it gives you a temporary pleasure for one, two, five minutes. And after which, you feel bad the rest of the day. It is because the Holy Ghost is in your life. Children of God, when they sin, they are never happy. Bible says, no man who is born of God will continue to sin. The reason is because there is a seed that lives in him. That seed is called the incorruptible seed. That's the seed of the word of God. It won't allow you to be at rest. So when it is all done, the weakness has manifested, and the devil has taken advantage of it, and you are down. You are feeling so terrible. And a girlfriend comes back by to you and says, hey boy, why are you doing like this? Why are you doing like this? You are just looking miserable. Ah, uh, after you even, ah, uh, you are not even happy that you had me. Nila Baba. You're not even happy that you had me. Ah, I had you, yes. How many minutes? Two minutes. But the rest of the day is sorrow for me. There is a way that seems right in the eyes of a man. But the end of it is destruction. What has happened has given me two minutes pleasure, but it has taken peace from me the whole week. And now you're telling me that am I not happy? I'm not happy. Every believer has to identify what is that thing that is a weakness? What is that area of vulnerability? That's the place that Satan is what? He's seeking. Listen, I, I like the word seeking. He's what? He's looking for. I said, look it for. He doesn't know it. He doesn't have a clue. Please, don't offer it to him. Don't make it known to him. And I pray no member of your family will offer that to him at any cost for any, any more amount of money. Hallelujah. Let's look at the scriptures and just try to tie up for tonight, for today. If that place of your weakness is not manned adequately, it will be an easy entrance for the devil into your life. God could be your, I mean, uh, into your life. This place of weakness, please hear me, it could be your temperament. There's what we call easy irritability. Small thing like this, you get angry. Your body will be vibrating. I say, ah, the way I'm feeling, I'll kill somebody here. Your children are saying, we are always praying that that moment will never show when our father will be vibrating. May that moment never be your portion. And many people justify, see this thing, you see me, I, my own is small, though. if you had met my father. Tell this woman, no. <laughs> she doesn't know who she married, though. She doesn't know who she married. <laughs> I'm not chewing gum boyfriend, though. <laughs> I am dangerous. God help you the next time you do this kind of thing, I'll kill you. And check my hand. I mean it, I'll kill you. If you check their eyes, you will see death inside. Woman, he's not joking, oh. I hope you read the newspapers. Some use pillow to hold the nose and block the nose until you breathe your last. And when they finish, they have no regret at that moment, oh. They say, I told her. Don't call me, text me for a ride. I told her. And you are lying down there. Please, I, please bear me witness. All the young people I have counseled in this church in the room of counseling. Me, oh, I always excuse temporary sep separation and marriage. I'm, tell, I'm confessing my sins for you to know. I always advise what? In the counseling room, I tell them to do for what? I advise for what? Temporary separation I, on one condition. 
on the condition that please so study very well. Shut your eye. Anytime you see what looks like death, run. Because only living people stay in marriage. <laughs> your spouse will marry again. When all is over, if it's a man, say six months, you will see him do like this to some other ladies like this. Because your case is already finished. I do not promote divorce, but I say what? For your life, you need to do what? Please run for some time. Stay somewhere and let there be interventions. Let there be what? Reinterventions that will bring restoration and then the place is safe for life. Then you can go back. Because some people, some people once their eyes become red, you don't even know where it's coming from. Please, don't forget about the fact that everybody just lifts up hands here in church and they're doing praise worship. Pastor, some of them are drinking ogogoro. They take the ogogoro, they mix it with tramadol. Am I talking to somebody here? They know what I'm talking about. You see the ovation, they know what I'm talking about. They take the Ogogoda and mix it with tramadol. I hope you know, for those of you, if you don't know, ask Dr. Ogbe, he will tell you. Tramadol by itself is a strong, terrible painkiller. Huh? It only has neighborhood, neighborhood with cataplam. Both of them strong painkillers. Some of you say, oh, Pastor, did you read medicine? You need to go through pain, you will know all the painkillers. <laughs> Hallelujah. They mix it with tramadol, and then they close their eyes and drink it. <laughs> Sister, so you don't know where your husband is coming from. You don't know that we went to church together. Shabi, he said, I'm coming. He went out and stepped out. And when he stepped out, did you follow him? You, don't even follow, you didn't follow him. And now if you have gone to take Kogoro mixed with tramadol, that is tramagoro. When he comes back, he's not the same again. It's not only the Holy Ghost that enters people. That's why Paul, speaking to the Ephesians in chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, he says what? Do not be filled with alcohol or wine. Instead, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Both of them are infilling. There's an infilling of the Holy Ghost. There's also an infilling of Tramagoro. And any of these two that enters you, you will never be the same again. So you are too small. He will kill you. You will not know he has killed anybody. Hallelujah. So you must be very careful. Anger is one of those that can be what? Entrance. If you are here, I beg you in the name of the Lord. If excessive anger is a problem in your life, you need to pray today and now. That that window, that door will be what? Closed. Because that's an avenue that the enemy will use to enter your life. And enter. When he enters, he does destruction on you, your person. And then from you, destroys your home. Because if you, if you don't know it, I have seen situations where a father beat the child out of anger because of pencil of... That time, five, pencil was not up to five naira. Between 1994 and 1996. Pencil, because he had bought the pencil five times in that week, the, each child, the child threw away the pencil and came back home, threw away the pencil, came back home. In the fifth time, the father said, what kind of rubbish is this? Am I going to be buying pencil every day? Bah, 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 that morning. And in the course of beating, ta, on the ground, the boy broke hand, broke his hand. And the same man took the child to the hospital. And he was lying now. Church member lying. What happened to the child? He said, the child fell. But he did not fall, he fell. You see lawyer? Lawyer said, but he fell. Yes, he, lo he fell. Under what condition? Shall you know that when motor jam you, you not fall. You fall, but were you not walking and you fell? No, motor jam you. So they will not blame you for falling that time. In fact, they will not call it, call, they will not call it falling. They will say what? He was hit by a runaway vehicle. That lady, you, do, you know, when you are lying, especially when you are a believer, there's a way the life doesn't come through. Yes, there's a way the thing will not come smoothly. 
The lady, the nurse, looked the father of that child and looked at him and said, you beat this child. His face came down. No argument. Has the devil entered that family? The mother was in school as at that time. She came back. Oh, my God. You, there's going to be, oh, me, 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 no, honey, honey, Abby. I came back, I found my child in POP. Not that he rolled out from double-decker bed and fell. That my honey, my darling, eh, the father of the children, take this child to the place where the head was broken. And you want me to kiss you? Sorry, sir. To kiss you? That means that it could be me. Has that thing, can you see that it has affected the man? It has affected the child? The mother came from school now and found her, her family, in, um, her child in this array. Has it affected the marriage? Yes! Listen to me. That is the sword of Joseph. When Joseph entered into the land of Bethel, what did he do? The Bible says he put the people to the sword. He killed. When the enemy enters your life through the window of anger, he's not going to leave you the same. He's going to cause devastation. You will suffer it. Your family will suffer it. Members of the family will suffer it. Other people can be, become victims. Temperament. If you, are a ter if you have a tem terrible temperament, please pray to God. Wrestle. I know very well that this is closable. Hear me. E. Temper, anger is not an incurable disease. It can be cured. It can be cured. Hello, it can be cured. Hello, it can be cured. It can be cured. I give you the answer. Go and check your Bible. Look at the book of First Peter. Chapter number 5. Look at verse 7 and 8. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter, First Peter chapter 5, no, not, this is not the, the, the reference. Check chapter 4, is it 4, 7? Give me the reference, Bible studies. Everybody here. Submit yourself to the Lord. Resist the devil, James, James 4, 7 and 8, right? James 4, 7, James 4, 7, James 4, 7, right? The devil is a liar. Can I remove the thing from my computer? The Holy Ghost is with me here. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have an amen? amen? I've interacted with it and this time the Holy Ghost wants to hold, the devil wants to hold it. Liar! I must speak the word of God, devil, you like it or not. Because I don't like you. Submit yourselves to, do, to who? Therefore, unto God. So what is the answer to the problem of, of anger? Even excessive anger and anger inherited from the great-grandparents into your, your parents and into you. What is the answer? Submit yourselves unto the Lord. If you do that, listen, look, look at what follows. Then do what? Resist the anger and the anger will go. Who born that anger? When you submit to God, God will treat it. Hello? God will treat it. Early morning, about 7 a.m. or thereabout, I, I woke up. I was having that terrible pain. And I called Dr. Obey. Ah, I'm coming home. I went to the hospital. He took me to one room. The man is seated here. Those doctors now are off. <laughs> Entered into one room, brought injection. I thought he was going to give me injection in the normal place. So, Ah, it is the very place where I'm having pain. He just brought the injection, put the, the series there. Ah, but I submitted to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did I do? I submitted to him. If you were coming at the Bobby, I'm sure if you were coming at the gate, you would hear Jesus. I, I shouted the loudest shout. But while shouting, I was still submitting. My brother, after the whole thing is over, he took away the pressure that would not allow me to sleep. That night I had fever. My body was hot. Pain would not allow me to close my eyes. By the time I had submitted to the doctor and he had treated me, friends, I went home. I slept. The pain had to go. Why? It meant a superior force. 
anger that you are carrying is not impossible to be treated. It can be treated by who? The Lord God Almighty. And what do you need, what do you need to do? Submit to him. He will treat it. One day somebody will wake up and say, ah, ah. Is this Mr. So-so-so? Hey, -so -so? God is great. That would just be the, the conclusion. They say what? Hey, God is great. Because nobody believed you could be found in this state. God will treat it. I say God will treat it. In the name of Jesus. It could be your appetite. Time will fail me. I'll continue this message at our next contact session because there's so much in it. It could be your temperament. I mentioned the temperament. It could also be your what? Your appetite. Appetite. What you like to eat or drink. See, there are things you eat physically. There are things you eat emotionally. It's still appetite. Do you know that there's appetite for money? It's that type of unbridled appetite for money that, God, that Paul was talking to Timothy about. He said what? The excess, the love of money is what? The root of evil. So if you have an appetite, an unbridled appetite for money, such that can make you to become like Evans, that is a channel, that's an entry point for who? For Satan to enter your life and do what? Destroy. Love of money. When you see money, your eyes are shining. Your body is shaking. You never rest until it is in your hand. You know how to transfer money from one point to another until it comes to your hands. That type of transfer, people call it thieves. You change the location of money from point A to point B and corner it into your box or into your purse. That transfer is a, is a sin. Scripture says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, it says, let him that stole, steal no more. Appetite. Appetite for food. We call physical appetite, food. Some people can't see food and pass. God help Nigeria. My friends here, God help Nigeria. The place we stayed in the convention, Pastor, your first secretary will, will, will testify. You know, that, host, that hotel, there is complimentary breakfast. And the complimentary breakfast is buffet. They put all manner of different food. Eh? And please, hear me, maybe... That kind of breakfast is not for takeaway. You have to eat it there. So they put, they put the food, put food there. First day we went there, everything was just, was normal, normal, gentlemanly. But we well, were eating in the morning, and then we saw some people. I was just watching. Some people come there, they will quickly go and sit down, pick whatever they want, eat. And they carried uh, uh, this, this uh, politician, what is it? Rubber, this rubber plate take away, for takeaway. After they have finished eating, they now approach the table again. You are chua, 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 chua. Put, put, fool the thing. Ah, ah, and then do what? Take it away. And these are convention delegates. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, wise people. He said, oh, amen. Chua, pua, pua, took away. And they do like that. Some people generally in the hotel. You are not the only people in the hotel. There are other people who are not convention delegates. Uh, so, and the breakfast was meant for everybody. Some people take their time to come to eat their breakfast. You don't put them on the run. By the time they come down to come take breakfast, everything was finished. Penultimate day to the end of the, meet, of the program, the hotel, uh, the, the res restaurant got wiser. When you approach the table, go and sit down, go and sit down. What do you want? <laughs> Hallelujah. They say, go and sit down. Sit down. We will bring your food to you. What do you want? You name whatever you want. They'll go there and pick it in correct quantity and come and put it in the plate for you and bring it to you. Okay? Honorable. Sit down. Eat. We give you. Amen. 
so that everybody will have. Before we allow you to finish this buffet, and we have other customers that are not conventioners. And you have plenty, look, church buses, church buses with church name. I, I know you, carry, 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 carry. You know, there is this sense of a who. I want to tell you, if they had put a cost to that breakfast, no, no, they would not do that. That's why some of them will remember I'm fasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Beep, 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 beep. Ah, ah. I make hotel have to get wiser to tell you, sit down, we'll serve you. What have they just said? We thought you are honorable. There is honorable people that are brought to a buffet. And since you have shown that you are not an honorable man, we will teach you how to be honorable. Sit down here, we'll bring the food to you. May God help us. So, if your appetite is that entry point for Satan, please watch it. What am I saying? Man does get your food. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Food will never be your God. Somebody stayed 40 days and 40 nights. His name is Jesus. He did not die. You will not die because you didn't take that breakfast or you didn't take that lunch or you didn't take that dinner. That's why many of us just cannot fast. Fasting is not part of our spiritual program. And I say to you, you have limited yourself because I saw it in scripture. He said, these kind do not go out. They do not answer to any kind of thing except by prayer and fasting. There are some stubborn demons that will never answer to you until you engage heaven at a sacrificial level. Fasting is not just not staying without food. It's not hunger strike. What fasting is, is what? Fasting is an engagement with heaven that makes you to look down on the food that it is not as important as what I'm doing with heaven. Therefore, let that food do what? Wait. You must get to, your, to your, a point in your Christian life when certain things have to wait to allow you to engage with heaven and penetrate the realms of heaven that ordinary men don't penetrate. It's not everybody that they bring to the, to the, to the, to the gates of Asso Rock. If you are going to enter into the gates of Asso Rock in heaven, there is a level, a measure of sacrifice that it must come, it must come with. So, if that is an opening the devil wants to engage, please shut that door and say, I will not die. Go ahead. Engage with heaven. Do your fasting. Whether for three days or for five days or for one week, as the Spirit of God leads you, do it. And before you know it, you will see food will lose value. Not, it will, you will be eating to live and not living to eat. It's watch out appetite. It's an entrance through which the devil can invade your life. Appetite for physical food. What of appetite for sexual food? Both men and women. Too much a drive to satisfy the sexual desire, sexual pleasure, sexual drive. Your libido has become your, your master. Once it rears its head, correct or no correct, you must express it. And if the place of expression, the correct place of expression is not, is not available, you enter anywhere, anywhere. And the issue is, uh, just let me satisfy myself. Ah, ah. Even going on the street, you know a particular street, either in Yaba, in Tejosho, or in, in, in Magodo, or in uh, 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 Shomolu, or wherever. You know a particular street that, has, that are where... The whole street is for professional prostitutes. You, you have a particular time you go there so that not everybody can see you. You're still in there. You have customer. Uh -uh. There's customer for rice, customer for beans, customer for... And you now have customer where you just... In fact, you can go there even when you don't have money. They'll book you down. You guys are laughing, but I'm talking about enslavement here. 
Go and check your Bible. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter number 8, beginning to read from verse 31, he said, whoever sins is a slave to sin. I'm talking about enslavement here. It is a man who has been really enslaved that his appetite for sex has taken him to a place where he has registered. And that he can go in there and come out on, even when we don't have money, they book him down. He has become what? Registered member. Ha! Ah, that man is not normal. He is a slave. And if you are seated here and you are still patronizing those streets and your name is written somewhere, pray God transfer your name from that book into the book of life. The wages of sin is still standing tall as what? As death. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. It doesn't matter the name. It doesn't matter the complexion. It doesn't matter the amount of money the person has. It doesn't matter how popular in the, in the, in the community they are. If you sin, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Please pray that God will transfer your name from that book of that woman and put your name in the book of life. Oh, God help you that you are not in bondage to any other thing. You are in bondage to a particular woman. She has your name and she has your phone number. That she can call you and remind you, ah, you still have a balance of 16,000. No? When you are coming next time, please come with my balance. Are they vexed inside? I don't know, sir. I don't know how to go preach this message. I don't go vex. Why? People have left open windows. And things are happening. You people are just here praying, praying, praying. We are praying so much and we are seeing little or no results. It's because of what? Entrances have been left open. Help me tell your neighbor, close that entrance. Help me tell your neighbor, man it, man it, man it, man it, man it. Man the entrance. Let me close here. I'll continue next time. Just talked about a part of appetite. I'll talk about other things the next time you hear this. Everybody, just where you are sitting, lift up your two hands. Say, Lord Jesus, today help me to identify that point of weakness that can give the devil an advantage into my life into my family, into my business, into my home, into my marriage, into the endeavors of my life. Oh God, open my eyes to identify that point of weakness, that point of vulnerability that can give the devil an advantage to enter and put me to the sword. In the name of Jesus, stand on your feet now. Open your mouth and loud like you mean what you are saying. And be very angry like I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. And say, Lord, today I stand by the authority of your word. Previously, whatever doors I left open that made my enemy to find an entrance into my life. Oh, God, I'm asking today, I stand with you to close that door. I stand with you to shut that entrance. I stand with you to man that gate. I put watchmen over that aspect of my life. Lord, whatever is that thing that the enemy will use as an entry point. Oh God, I pray. Help me identify it. Help me to put, to man it. Oh, Rekalusoprogodosike, <laughs> Marani tele lizata mi ponto yandea kali manu parita hara kandoro bo rika ni lashkala bazire aliketi namasko brene kilebo bari kamata liko 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 
Ani poti kale ba dika na ba suta le bos. Ma briga diga la ba proma ki andala ba. Ma briga dede le baba ra baba shanda. La brina mara ba kiri na ba kali bara opa. Ali kani mane pa kata la ba biba koye kene. Ranga la kati te le pori te bodo. Ari bo 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 ye kama kati kala ba kubara kiete. Ari amanda sakata kalu ba kaka 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 kaka. Raka pata kati kere kete kete. Raka pata kata. Raka te ke ke e ke ke kapi kamata rani kala digata mato ke 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 le ke te mato kanda ruba kaya rebo ma prano robos kende ribalika rakanda raba shanda raba boske ramata thala baskende la prende rebo boska ike le bosi la prama mashanda intoli kaliba idamando sa. In the name of Jesus. Now join me to pray this prayer and pray it seriously. Can you say with me, oh Lord, I command every spy looking, to the, looking for the entrance into my life to get back in the name of Jesus. I send back every spy looking for the entrance into my life to destroy me, looking for the entrance into my family to destroy it. Into looking for the entrance into my business to destroy it. Every spy coming with a sword to destroy my marriage. I said today, I command him to be to, to be sent back. I send them back. I send them back. I send them back. I send them back. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Open your mouth and resist. 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 Resist the spy. Open your mouth now, resist the spy. I reject you, spy. I refuse you entrance into my life. I man my guest today. I man my guest today. I man my guest today. There is no room for you. Oh. Satan, no room. 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 You spies of the enemy, agents of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. All ye demonic powers, I said today, you will not enter into my life. You will not enter into my marriage. You will not enter into my home. You will not enter and cause me pain. You will not put me to the sword in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. One of the agents that is coming looking for the entrance into your life is called the spirit of death. The spirit of death. I decree today in the name of Jesus that that agent will not find an entrance into your life. Because the, the devil cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Every agent of death checking out for, your, for the entrance into my life, onto your life, to kill you. Today, I command that agent of death to return to sender. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, oh Lord. The agent of death. I receive power from heaven to overcome the agent of death. It won't find an entrance into my family. No member of my family is dying now. I block that entrance. I man that gate. We shall live and not die to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Open your mouth and pray. You evil spirit, spirit of the devil, you came to kill, you came to destroy, you came to steal, you will not have your way. Oh, Kale Mozita, you will not have your way. Oh, you will not have your way. Get mad, get mad, get mad, get mad. Don't allow the devil to have your, his way. Please don't pamper the devil. Don't pamper the devil. Church, rise up to your feet. Don't pamper, to the, pamper the devil. Rise to your feet. Don't pamper the devil. Rise to your feet. Don't pamper the devil. 
Rise to your feet, don't pamper the devil. Rise to your feet, don't pamper the devil. Rise! In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, I put a covering. Let me hear you loud and clear. I put a covering. The covering of the Almighty God over every member of my family. Please call them by name, by name, by name, by name, by name, by name, by name. I put a covering over you, Amos. I put a covering over you, Esther. I put a covering you over, over you, Timothy. I put a covering over you, Eunice. I put a covering over you, Tychicus. I put a, cover, a, a covering over you, Grace. I put a covering over every member of my family. You will not be victim. You will not fall victim to Satan's invasion. You will not fall victim to the enemy's invasion. You will not fall victim to the enemy's activities. You will not die. You will live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I say you will live, you will not die, you will live to declare the goodness of the living, of the Lord in the land of the living. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to, last, to, to pray last prayer. Please check your life. I beg you in the name of the Lord, be realistic with yourself. Is there a sin that easily besets you? There's no better entrance into your life than that channel. And the devil will go looking for it. He's just going to punch that button. And mm, into, his life, into your life he's gone. So I want you to pray. God, and as you are praying, if you remember any particular sin that is a sore point, an easy entrance, an area of weakness, Paul was a huge man in the spirit, but yet he still said what? Oh, wretched man, that's what I am. He cried out unto God. The Bible says, whoever covers his sin shall never prosper, but whoever confesses it and turns away from it will do what? will have mercy. Can you pray for yourself and confess to God, is there an area of sin that you are still contending with and it has become an open door for Satan to penetrate your life? No wonder some things are not just working. I want you to ask God for mercy and confess it to him. And be serious about it. Not only will you confess it, but you will turn away from it. That you will say, God, today is today. I man that opening. As you forgive me, I will not return to it anymore. But you will give me strength. I heard him say, my grace is sufficient for you. There's a release of grace in the house this morning to help you in that area of vulnerability. Talk to God. Talk to God. It's not a matter of shouting. It's a matter of real engagement with God. Do it, do it, do it, do it now, do it now. Do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now. 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 Receive mercy from God. Confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness if you will confess them to him. There is mercy in the house and there is grace to help you in times of your need, in times of your weakness. God wants to help you. Is there anybody that is in this meeting and there's something to bring at the altar and just settle with God? Please come do it. Is there a particular weakness that has become like a gangrene and you've dealt with it and tried and tried and tried? It has continued to be stubborn. I heard scripture say, if you bring your stubborn child out of the city and put him out there, elders will stone him to death. We 
can join our hearts and our, and our spirits together with yours and do battle against that stubborn spirit. You want to yield it to Jesus. You want to present it to Jesus. You want to submit. I told you, excessive anger, terrible anger can still be treated by God if you will submit to God. Is there anybody who, are, who has never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You haven't known Jesus. You go to church, yes, but you truly have not made a confession of faith in Jesus Christ. He's not Lord and Savior of your life. You just follow the motions in church, but you are not of God. I want to pray with you today. Lift up your right hand where you are if you are in that situation. You haven't confessed Jesus as personal Savior and Lord. Truly, you go to church, you are involved in the motions, but you are not born again. And whether, I don't need to ask you, I will tell you the truth. If you are in that state, a particular sin or the other rules over your life. Where Christ is not Lord, sin is Lord. Lift up your right hand if you are. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ this morning. Don't be ashamed of anybody. That's the beginning point for closing any kind of channel that the devil can use against you. Thank you, my brother. Please just... Find your way out this way to this place, to the front. Yeah, I want to join my hands with you, yes. I want to join my hands with you and help you to come to faith in Christ. Oh, God. This is surgery. Three Sundays now we've been going through surgery. Surgeries take time. Thank you, my brother. Any other? Is there any other person at the extension? Another person in the main auditorium? Any other? Brother Altinwa, please come stand with, the, with these brothers. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for this brother. Thank you for bringing him onto this point of a personal acknowledgement of you and a confession. I pray today in the name of Jesus that you will help him. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, confess you today I confess you today as my Lord, as my, Lord, as my, Savior. my Savior. I acknowledge, I acknowledge I've, been I've been a sinner because anyone who doesn't know you, doesn't know you is a slave, to sin. slave to sin. I have been a slave to sin, slave to sin. ruled by the devil, by the devil. Governed, by governed by self. I ask you today, ask you please forgive me, forgive me. Cleanse, me cleanse me from all my wickedness every evil work. Wash me with your blood, with the blood of Jesus and give me a brand new name. Write my name in the book of life. I establish you as Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for receiving me. May your spirit begin to govern my life. Give me the joy of salvation today. I confess that I will not go back to the devil and to serving the having sin in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Father, I pray today that, Lord, this confession of faith will be true. This confession of faith will be lasting. This confession of faith will be real. And this confession of, of faith will save my brother. In the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you accept him in the fellowship of the beloved. In the name of Jesus, write his name in the book of life. Give him the joy that believers experience in the inside. In the name of Jesus. Give him access to walk with you in the name of Jesus. Help him, oh God. And every entry point that the devil used before. Today, I stand by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ to declare that door closed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Like my brother is going to chat with you a short while. Then you can come back and join us in the service. Let's give Jesus Christ a clap in the house. Let's celebrate our Lord in the house.
Father, we thank you because you have visited us this morning. Our lives are certainly not the same. Something has been deposited in us. Our eyes have been opened to certain realities. We have been called to others in certain areas. You have awakened us from the place of slumber so that our eyes can watch night and day. That we provide no room for the devil. I pray, eternal God, that you will help us, O oh God, to be on our guard against the wires of the enemy. And having done all, help us to stand in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone, O oh God, whose field has been invaded by the enemy? Today, I ask, O oh God, that that enemy will not find a place anymore. I command the enemy and all of his, all of his instruments to pack out and let your children experience your deliverance. If the sun sets us free, we shall be free indeed. Father, may this be our portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. And the church said a louder amen. amen. As we come to this table, oh God, I ask that your presence will be real in it. And relate with the elements, oh God, it shall remind us of the blood and, 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 and bread of Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ. And in, in this, it shall establish us in us, in you, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, pray. All right, please help me tell from your, your neighbor, God bless you. And you may be seated. You may be seated. We want to go to the Lord's table now quickly. Bible tells us that when they met together like this at the table, Jesus took the bread and broke it and said to them, this is my body which is offered to you. This is not that bread that your, your ancestors ate in the wilderness and they died. But this is the bread that came from heaven. And whoever eats of this bread, even though they die, they shall live again. In other words, this is the bread that is a life giver. The body of Jesus Christ gives us life. And I pray today that as we engage with, with this and as we eat of this bread, the life of God will flow in you and through you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for spending these few minutes listening to the Word of God. We pray that His grace and glory will always be with you. Have a lovely week and see you next time.